Uh, I'm here with Andrew Wam from Engineers Without Borders. So uh, tell me what you do, Andrew. On a day-to-day -day basis, I work with uh, young engineers trying to find them ways to get involved in international development, so working on uh, water supply um, or sanitation projects in Sub-Saharan Africa and South America and East Asia. We do a lot of training courses, do a lot of research projects um, into these sort of global issues around um, all different kinds of technology, but we do a lot of work on water and sanitation. So um, tell me a bit about what Engineers Without Borders is like as an organization. I know it's got lots of national branches. Yeah. It's Engineers Without Borders, um, I suppose you could describe as a, as a reaction to the, the fact that um, the, the world as we know it isn't addressing some of the biggest, most challenging issues of our time, uh, fundamentally water and sanitation and the dignity of, of, of people, uh, people's lives. Um, and it's actually kind of... It's grown up as a movement around the world. Um, in the UK, we started in 2001 as a student club. Yeah. And we basically just got uh, one club going at one university and it spread to all the other universities. And it started in America, right? Sometime in the 90s? Um, well, like all good movements, it started in France. Oh, in um, France? In, really? I didn't realise that. In the 60s, 70s. In the um, 60s, 70s? Because yeah. I only know it from Bernard Amadie. I thought he started it. Wow, that's really interesting. No, I mean, that's where the... Uh, the website UWB International okay. um, is from, and there's a lot of organisations on there, but there's a lot of organisations that aren't on there either. Got it. And it's Got actually, it. It, we're all part of this kind of movement, yeah. um, but some of us are, are you know, two-man bands in some countries, and some of them are, you know, like Engineers Without Borders Spain, is gigantic. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, that's really interesting. So, I mean, it came from the same kind of cultural DNA as MSF? Yeah. I think so. Th this idea that of mobilising a, a professional skill or a professional body to um, to really address some of the most basic needs of society rather than continually continually advancing um, you know building ski slopes in Dubai or whatever you know go, going to the point where it's kind of um, it's, it's geekery yes. Um, yes. now what we're finding is that the geeks are coming to save us because um, uh -huh. you know, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a geek myself I'm an information and communications engineer yep. and um, you know that that, that kind of uh, development process in technology terms has given us an opportunity to leapfrog a terrible path of development that we have taken yep. in this part of the world. Yep. One of, one of the things we're talking about is you know engineers broke it and engineers are going to have to fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's uh, you know. So many of the world's problems have stemmed from their supposed solutions. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things that it's kind of we've got to face with. Yes. We've got to find ways to respond to those problems. Absolutely. So you said EWB right now is something like 35 countries. Yeah. And the question that I'm kind of asking today is, okay, 10 years from now, the telecom industry say that we'll basically have more than 99% of the human race will have a cell phone. Cool. And that's going to include, you know, an enormous number of people. Well, the example you use is 2 billion people with a cell phone but no toilet. Yeah. And I think that we're less than a decade away from that scenario. Um, tell me what Engineers Without Borders will be like in 10 years when it's, say, 160 national branches and, you know, what's it going to look like in this sort of globalised world? I think it's actually going to come to define the engineering profession for a lot of people on this earth in the sense that the, the engineering profession, it's, it's got this idea of um, basic needs but also kind of economic advancement and, and social advancement, all of that. Um, but it, in terms of the people who actually need engineering on a day-to-day -day basis, yep. it's, it's people who need water and sanitation, it's people in urban yep. slums. Yep. In, in, yep. Um, and of course, settlements. water and sanitation is the stuff that you can't really put on a truck and ship. Like stoves, you can put on a truck and ship. But Telephones water and you can put on a truck. Yeah, right, right. All of those things. But, but I think it... It's a leapfrogging gap. Yeah. You can't leapfrog sewer pipe. What you can leapfrog is the information gap. Okay. And what you find is that, you know, pe people say that 900 million people without access to safe water. That, you know, if you don't have water, you die within three days. You know, 900 million people are not going to die within three days because they haven't got access to water. They are doing this themselves. Yes. What they need is access to the information to understand how to do it more effectively, to yes. really scale that up. Yep. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do as a movement around the world is to inspire people living in slums, to inspire people, young people, young engineers mm -hmm. who are growing up, mm -hmm. to, um, to give them the skills and want them to become an engineer, you yep. know, to actually solve yep. these problems. And that's kind of what engineering is about. It's, it's solving problems. You take a problem and you solve it. Yeah.
and, and that access to information, I think, is just going to be absolutely critical. It's, it's locked up in so many books and so many educational institutions and, and our own heads. And I think, speaking as an information engineer, a computer networks engineer, yep. you know, it's it's fundamental. The mobile phone revolution, six billion mobile phone users, yeah, yeah. it's going to be incredible. There was a picture that used to get passed around ACFO of um, this enormously overstacked bookcase in, I think, one of UNESCO buildings. Was it one of yours? Yeah. I think it was the ACFO guys. Okay. And it was this huge thing, and it was like thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of reports on water and sanitation in villages. And their question was, how do we data mine this and turn it into different practice for the villagers? Yeah. And you know, we, I, in my sort of thinking on this is we've got basically 10 years to get it off paper and translate it. And then I'm sort of seeing, you know, engineers like Borges, sort of the social network that provides people access to second and third tier expertise. Absolutely. I think, I think it's that leapfrogging that's the interesting thing. Whether, you know, we don't need to strip mine Africa to put laid copper cables through our telephone networks anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've actually got to uh, think about the same sort of thing with our um, information, our knowledge, mm -hmm. and it's you know a little bit of information can go a long way. Absolutely. And, and it, I mean, it, it doesn't actually take that much effort to communicate it. You can work work within the community, and within a couple of days, they can start understanding, responding themselves. Yep. So um, it's a case of getting it out of the bookcases and into the real world. Let me let me throw you a future scenario. Yep. So let's say that you can join engineers or the borders online in the future globally, and you've got five million members, Yeah. how would Engineers Without Borders organize globally to get the skills and the knowledge across the network to where it was needed without overloading your professors? Now, it's an interesting question, because one of the things that I think we've got a real problem with in this world is not um, a lack of engineers without borders, it's, it's borders without engineers. Entire countries where they've just, you know, got so... Fewer than one engineer per 100,000 people. Wow. How is a country supposed to develop water and sanitation infrastructure unless it depends on external aid? It's going to be hackers. Um, it's, it's going to have to be people who, who inspire. It's going to have to be people who've got access to the information or are willing to share it um, and feel a professional motivation to. I'm not talking about the bleeding hearts and artists of the engineering world. I'm talking about rigorous engineering. Absolutely. No, um, you're talking about civil engineers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and if you get... Um, if we can find a way to get, you know, if we've got a membership of five million around the world, yeah. one of the things I passionately believe about Engineers Without Borders is that it's not a talking shop, it's not a movement, it's not a campaign. Mm -hmm. These are people doing things. These are people actually able to provide water, able to share their knowledge, to share their expertise, so that people can have a safe drink of water at the end of the day and not get diarrhoea every time they go and get, to get something to drink. It's, yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's, it, it's it, I wouldn't say it would be a revolution. But, it, but I think it's, it could feel like it to the people on the receiving end, to the people that are trying to help. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to you know, seeing how this develops. And at some point, we've got to figure out how to get you guys talking to the big telcos. Because getting this kind of engineering capability onto the cell phone. Absolutely. You know, and if the big telcos are the guys who are going to have these markets. of you know, They're going to put on 3 billion new customers, most yeah. of whom are making less than $5 a day. I think water and sanitation technology on the phone Absolutely. is potentially a sales point for those guys. Yeah. And if you're not doing it through something like EWB, how do you know that it's trustworthy? Yeah, and, uh, and, and even you know a name like Engineers Without Borders, it's, it, it's not big enough. You need, you need to have the Institution of Civil Engineers in the UK. You need to have you know the, 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 the global water initiatives of this, this world um, supporting these these ideas. It can be done. The conversations are happening. Yeah. It's yeah. about trying to think more multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, us talking to te telecoms companies yeah, yeah. saying, we've got an idea. Yeah, fantastic.